Hello students, welcome to lecture 15 of the online course on nanophotonics, plasmonics and metamaterials. In today's lecture, we will cover the emerging applications of uh, photonic crystals. So, here is the lecture outline, we will start with application of 1D photonic crystal, we will discuss uh, break grating briefly, then we will move on to uh, periodic dielectric waveguides. We will also look into some applications of uh, 2D photonic crystals like uh, photonic crystal slabs, photonic crystal fibers. We will also look into index guiding photonic crystal fibers and endlessly single mode fibers. So, let us look into the application of uh, 1D photonic crystal as I mentioned. We will study break grating. So, break grating is nothing but you know it is a set of uniformly spaced parallel partially refractive uh, planar mirrors. So, you can see here. So, this is basically a break grating. So, here we are showing that there are n identical mirrors. So, what happens in this grating when some incident light falls, some particular wavelength or frequency gets reflected, remaining gets transmitted. Now, such a structure has angular and frequency selectivity. And that is useful for many applications such as filter and then you know uh, pulse compensation uh, in optical fiber communication and so on. So, here we will generalize the definition of break grating to include a set of uh, n uniformly spaced identical multilayer segments. So, the devices which are fabricated uh, using this particular grating are distributed break reflectors. DBRs and fiber break grating which is uh, FBGs in short and they are often used in resonators and lasers. FBGs are also very popular for sensing application because uh, depending on the surrounding media the refractive index of the uh, surrounding media can change and that can change the wavelength of the reflected light and that can be used as a sensing mechanism. Now, let us look into Bragg reflection in details. So, consider light reflected at a angle theta. So, here we are calculating the angle from the plane of the mirrors and here at the m parallel reflecting planes which are separated by a distance of capital lambda. So, what happens? This light little bit of this will get reflected and remaining will get transmitted. So, we assume that only small fraction of the light is basically reflected from each plane and the amplitude of each of these uh, reflected lights are assumed to be almost equal. Now, the reflected lights will have a phase difference because different light is actually traveling different distance, different ray here is traveling different distance. So, you can calculate the phase difference phi small phi as k times 2 capital lambda and sin theta. So, k sin theta is basically the component of the wave vector into this particular multilayer structure. So, the phase difference will be k 2 capital lambda. Why capital lambda 2 capital lambda? It has to travel this part twice. Okay? And the angle at which the intensity of the reflected light is maximum that is known as the Bragg angle. So, sin theta b is given as lambda over 2 capital lambda. What is capital lambda? The spacing between the mirrors. Small lambda is that particular wavelength of light. Now, such reflections are encountered when light is reflected from a multilayer structure. And here as mentioned, uh, remember that theta is basically defined with respect to the parallel planes. Now, the reflection or reflectance of break grating is basically determined at the two assumptions. What are those? The first one is the mirrors are weakly reflective, so that the incident light is not depleted when it propagates. So, the reflection amplitude is basically very low. And second thing is that the secondary reflection that means, reflection of the reflected uh, waves, those are considered negligible because the first uh, reflected wave itself is weak. If you take this to approximation in mind, you can find out the reflectance of the n mirror grating 
which can be related to the reflectance r of the single mirror by this particular equation. So, r n, n corresponds to the n mirror grating here will be sin square n phi over sin square phi times r and here phi denotes the phase between the successive phasors whereas the phase is basically defined by 2 phi and that is corresponding to a round phase or round trip phase okay you can call it also round trip phase that is why it is 2 phi now this particular factor that you have seen here sin square n phi over sin square phi represents the intensity of the sum of the n phasors of unit amplitude and phase difference to phi okay now the function can obtain a peak value which is n square when the break condition is basically satisfied that means you have to look for condition where 2 phi is equal to q times 2 pi what is q q is like integer 0 1 2 3 and so on now the reflectance will also drop away drop away from these values sharply so there will be a very sharp cutoff with a width that is inversely proportional to n okay so larger the n sharper will be the cutoff so that is why larger the bragg reflectance you will get a higher order filter you can say okay and in this simplified model you can actually see that the intensity of the total reflected wave is at most the factor of n square greater than the intensity of the reflected wave or from the single mirror or single segment now for a break rating comprising partially reflective mirrors which are separated from each other by a distance of capital lambda and we have seen that the round trip phase 2 small phi is basically 2k capital lambda cos theta and theta is considered to be the angle of incidence so here you see this theta is not considered from here it is basically this particular theta okay so in that case the uh, equation will have cos theta okay so you can write 2k capital lambda cos theta can be taken as 2 q pi this is nothing but you know the phase round trip phase should be equal to integral multiple of 2 pi okay and from that if you write 2 pi by k equals small lambda you can actually get this in terms of small lambda and capital lambda so you can write cos theta equals q small lambda over 2 capital lambda this can also be written as omega b over omega that is the Bragg frequency over the fr normal frequency okay or you can uh, this is the angular frequency you can also write them in terms of linear frequency okay now how we obtain this let us have a quick look so this is what you have seen this is called the Bragg condition okay this particular condition of theta on the incident angle is basically the basically the uh, Bragg condition and here we have encountered two new terms which is uh, omega b that is basically pi c over capital lambda and nu b okay that is c over 2 lambda so what is the relationship between this and this, this is linear frequency and this is angular frequency okay so these are both Bragg frequencies so what you see here that at normal incidence the peak reflectance occurs at uh, frequencies that are basically integral multiple of the Bragg frequency that is you have to look for frequencies which are uh, nu equals this is not nu b this will be nu equals uh, q nu b okay so this is just nu okay and at frequencies where nu is less than nu b means the Bragg condition is not getting satisfied at any angle and for frequencies like uh, which is uh, less than this one uh, nu b okay the Bragg condition is satisfied okay i think there is al also one typo here it will be um, nu is here nu b should be here okay there is a typo again so it's like you know the frequency between um, nu b and 2 nu b you can see that the Bragg condition is basically getting satisfied at one angle and that angle is basically uh, theta equals cos inverse of lambda over 2 capital lambda okay or you can write it as cos inverse of nu b over nu 
So, you can actually see those calculations here. So, here is the plot that shows the locus of frequencies. So, this is the frequency and the angle at which break condition is satisfied. Now, if you take nu and nu b, the ratio to be 1.5. So, if you, if you draw this uh, dotted line, you will see that you are getting theta equals uh, 42.8 degree. So, in that case, how do you get the Bragg angle? Bragg angle is basically this angle that will be 90 minus uh, this which is 41.8 degree. So, with that we understand that how uh, the Bragg rating works. Now, if you take an example, specific example that n equals 10. So, you are considering only 10 uh, identical mirrors and we have also restricted the performance of the mirrors like power reflectance modulus of small r square is taken as 0 0.5. And in that case, okay, we will see how the performance of this mirror looks like. Now, dependence of capital phi okay, on the inter mirror phase delay small phi is this one, right? What is small phi? That is a phase delay n k naught lambda. That is like from one mirror to another, what is the uh, phase delay? This is not the round trip phase delay, this is the inter mirror phase delay. Okay? Now, you if you plot this, Okay, uh, you will see that within the shaded region, this capital phi is basically complex and the imaginary part are actually shown here by uh, dashed curves. So, what is understood here is that, you know, um, the this is also periodically repeating. Now, if you try to plot reflectance r based on the previous formula that you have discussed, as a function of frequency, okay, um, you can actually convert them into the Bragg frequency, which is nu b, given by c over two capital lambda. Okay, you will see that you are getting clear stop band. Stop band means you know you are getting reflectance completely one, okay, and then suddenly it drops, and then again it goes back. So at every nu b integral multiple of nu b, okay, and at zero you will get this stop band. Okay. So, that is that's how you can actually use Bragg rating as a particular uh, band stop filter and you can actually make it reflect a particular wavelength. Now, if you take specific example of creating a Bragg rating like this by alternating uh, two different dielectric material like uh, D N1 and N2. So, here N1 is 1.5, N2 is 3.5 and D1 and D2 are taken to be equal and you have 10 such segments. So, low, high, low, high. So, this kind of low, high segments you have repeated 10 times okay? and you have placed this entire grating. This is called dielectric break grating. You have put this entire grating in a medium of refractive index N1 okay? and after you calculate okay, you, uh, the reflectance versus frequency you can see that you know the stop bands are basically centered at this particular wavelengths okay lambda b uh, sorry nu b 2 nu b 3 nu b and so on okay so here you can find out that nu b is nothing but c over 2 capital lambda what is capital lambda that is basically the period here the period is marked clear so this way you are able to get good uh, frequency selective performance from Bragg reflectors. Now, let us move on to the next topic which is basically a periodic dielectric waveguide. So, periodic dielectric waveguide which have only one dimensional periodic pattern or grating kind of thing okay, along the propagation direction, but in this case they have finite thickness and width. Okay, that is the only difference. So, in the previous case we have considered all to have infinite in this direction only in one direction we are bothered. So, let us look into some of these examples. So, many periodic uh, waveguide structures are possible. So, few are shown here as you can see this is basically a uh, one dimensional uh, array of holes okay? and um, these are all like that. So, these are basically array of uh, dielectric columns. So, here index waveguiding is possible in the two transverse direction. So, while the periodicity is along this x direction, in this case uh, 
the index guiding is possible in z direction so based on because it will like high index material surrounded by low uh, index uh, air so you'll be able to guide modes along the length of this wire okay so that is how index guiding can take place along y direction or sorry z direction and in this case it is periodic along x and the index guiding can take place along the other uh, transverse direction that is y direction so it will turn out that regardless of the geometry whatever is the geometry that you are seeing here these structures they exhibit a common phenomena and what is that they have a form of photonic band gap along their periodic direction so along this direction where they are periodic they have a photonic band gap and they can confine light in other directions so like in this direction or in this direction they are able to confine light by the principle of index guiding we can also look for two dimensional periodic patterns okay that will combine index guiding in one direction with photonic uh, band gap in other direction so examples are shown here so let us assume a uh, two dimensional dielectric waveguide the permittivity material is permittivity is uh, this one epsilon equals 12 so it's a 2d material into the plane as you can see so we are only bothered about x and y dimension so the height or the width of this material is 0.4 a what is a a is basically the um, period okay so this is a slab and this is or you can say this is a continuous waveguide and this is a periodic uh, dielectric waveguide right so in the periodic dielectric waveguide we have used uh, dielectric squares the dimension of the squares are given here 0.4 a times 0.4 a and the period is lattice period is a okay so in both case there is a conserved wave vector k that you can see along x direction okay because of the translational symmetry and that results in guided modes so if you look into the band diagram of the waveguides okay for tm polarized modes okay that will be like kz equals 0 so they are basically in plane so you are able to see that for the continuous one you do not actually have a band gap okay you have even band 1 here and then odd band 1 okay and this is the light cone okay and in the case of uh, the periodic structure you are able to see that even band 1 and even band 2 okay we'll come to this uh, discussion later what is even band and odd band and this light cone i'm just trying to show you that with this kind of periodic structure you are able to get a band gap okay and uh, so the left one as i mentioned it's a uniform waveguide and uh, the right one is a periodic waveguide including twice the irreducible brillouin zone so you could have actually done up to here but just to show it you have taken twice the brillouin irreducible brillouin zone to show the entire curve and you are able to see a band gap in this case so as i mentioned the blue um, shaded region in this graphs are basically the light cone so they are basically nothing but the extended states propagating in air okay these are not the guided modes okay however in this region you will have uh, guided modes they are leveled as um, even or odd depending on the y equals 0 mirror symmetry plane so if you take this is y equals 0 is this particular plane so along this plane if it is symmetric you call it even if it is asymmetric you call it odd okay and the waveguide is symmetric under reflection because if you cut it at the middle or if you put a plane at the middle you will see top and bottom are equal so you can say that the waveguide is symmetric upon reflection so consequently all the guided modes can be classified as either even or odd depending on the mirror reflection in this particular plane and one can see that in this case we have only one even band and one odd band an even band is having the lower frequency so it is the fundamental mode okay so it has got the fewest mode nodes that is why it is fundamental and it is also having the lowest frequency
Now, if you look into the field patterns, let us look into the field pattern and understand what is even or not. So, at k equals pi by a, that is the billion zone edge, if you take the um, z electric field distribution and if you try to see along y equals 0 plane, you will see top and bottom part are actually equal. So, this you can call as even band 1. In this case also, if you take a you know y equals 0 plane and compare the top and bottom, you will see they are symmetric. So, that is also even. So, you can call it as even band 2. Why this is band 1? This is band 2. This has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 nodes. This has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 nodes and so on. So, it has got more number of nodes and lowest energy. So, this is the lower uh, fundamental mode. Okay? However, at odd mode, you can see if you take a y equals 0 line here, you will see that this part and this part are basically inverse. So, one is positive, one is negative and so on. The red one shows positive, blue one shows negative. So, they are basically anti-symmetric. So, you can call this as odd mode. Okay? Now, okay, this we have already discussed. Now, let us look into the band diagram for the waveguide. Okay. So, in case you take a three dimensional strip, it means it has got a finite width and thickness. So, width is also finite, thickness is also finite. So, it, this actually becomes a uh, three dimensional dielectric strip. So, it has got it is basically suspended in air and then the holes are having a periodicity of uh, A and these holes are cylindrical holes. So, if you try to plot the irreducible brilliant zone. Okay? So, you are actually plotting half of it. If you want to get this entire thing like this in the previous case, you can uh, plot up to double of the irreducible brilliant zone. That is up to you. But here also you can see that in the case of odd modes, you are able to get a band gap. Okay? So, here the odd modes are shown. Okay? So, this is basically E O 1 mode and E O 2 mode. Okay? So, the plot is of Hz. Okay. So, let us look into the uh, band diagram and here we can identify M and E modes. Now, what are M and E modes? This is basically E mode or the TM mode and so these are basically E bands or you can say fundamental E bands or you can say TM bands and uh, M bands are basically the T bands. They are shown in red and blue. Okay? And uh, this is the light cone. Okay? And you can see these are the different modes which are possible. This is very much similar to the band diagram that you have seen in the previous uh, lecture. Just that only difference here being uh, that we are um, seeing it for a particular finite structure like a th three dimensional dielectric step. And we are uh, strip, and we are only calculating the half the uh, brilliant zone. So these are the two odd modes and even modes. Okay, sorry, odd mode one, odd mode two, as we can see, and this shows you the um, distribution. So here you can see that in the first case the modes are concentrated in the dielectric, uh, oh, sorry, the air holes, whereas in the second case uh, the modes are basically concentrated in the dielectric strip around the cylindrical holes. Okay? Now, if you want to introduce a point defect in this dielectric uh, periodic dielectric waveguide, what you can do? You can actually make one of this hole a defective one. Means, you can actually change the dimension of uh, one particular hole so that you know the spacing between one pair of holes can be increased okay from say a to 1.4 a so that way also you are actually in introducing defect so what happens you know this is from the top you can see that you know this is how the electric field sorry the magnetic field pattern will look like and this is from the side okay so here you will see that the holes are actually uh, the, the magnetic field is actually getting decayed from the center. So, there is a kind of confinement 
in the cavity okay so there are resonant modes possible in that particular point defect this is also shown from the top okay so the strong localization as you can see here as well okay or you can see in these two cases okay uh, the dielectric structure is shown in this yellow pattern that you have already seen the field decays only inversely with the distance in the lateral dimension so the field decay is shown here you can also see it this way that the field strength is decaying and this is because of the slow radiative leakage okay and that is true because there is a defect uh, after that you know the field is getting confined but outside that it will be decaying so with that we understood that we are able to make periodic dielectric waveguides of different shapes to confine or uh, to um, engineer the band gap and get some properties out of it so one example from the brake grating if we go back so it is basically this particular brake grating you are making in the fiber so we are calling it as fiber brake grating so you take a standard glass fiber okay which is basically guiding light by index guiding you just that you have to modify the you know index of the core in a you know particular pattern that high low high low high low and so on so you are able to get create a kind of break grating on the fiber itself so in that case what will happen one particular wavelength will get reflected or band can get reflected remaining will get transferred so if you take this kind of a input signal red to blue all the colors are there but say you have designed this break grating that is resonating at um, the reflection is maximum at say green so the green will be stopped and all other things will be passed other than green so this way you can use it for filtering purpose now let us look into the an, another type of application of photonic crystals which are photonic crystal slabs now these are simple structures with only one dimensional periodicity that that can be used to confine light in three dimension by combining combination of band gap and index guiding so remember that photonic crystal slabs or planar photonic crystals with two dimensional periodicity but a finite thickness okay now because they have finite thickness they are not exactly two dimensional photonic crystals in two dimensional photonic crystal we assume that to have you know they they can be very infinitely tall okay but here despite there is resemblance with resemblance with the um, 2d photonic crystal the finite thickness in the vertical direction they introduce some qual uh, qualitatively new behavior and because of which you know they are slightly different from that two dimensional photonic crystals just as the periodic uh, dielectric waveguide differed from photonic crystals in one dimension so if you look into the band um, structure or band diagram of a 1d photonic um, crystal and a periodic dielectric waveguide though they are more or less similar in nature but there is certain difference here also you will find that that uh, because of this finite height or thickness this uh, photonic crystal slabs so this is basically a slab of the dielectric materials okay so you have low index material then high index material and then low index material here also you have something like that but it's a inverse one than this structure so these two structures are basically complementary this is a array of uh, rods this is an array of holes so you right now you might understand that why we need rod slab and hole slab one will give you band gap in one particular mode the other will give you it in the other mode so these are the examples of photonic crystal slabs they basically combine the two dimensional periodicity that is in xy plane and they have index wave guiding along the z direction okay so if you take rod slab that is basically a square lattice of dielectric rods in air and you can consider hole slab these are basically triangular or hexagonal lattice of air holes so ideally you should say cylindrical air holes in dielectric slab 
So these are the dimensions we have taken. So uh, the rods are having radius of 0 0.2 a. A is standard. A, a is the lattice constant, right? Here everything is in terms of lattice constant, so they can be normalized to any other. They are normalized. So if you, whatever value you pick as a lattice constant, you can find the corresponding radius. And the slab has been taken to have thickness of 2a. Okay. <coughs> So this is the thickness for this one rod slab. If you take the whole slab, the radius of the holes are 0.3a and the thickness of the slab is 0.6a. Okay. So these are the dimensions you have taken. And then when you calculate the photonic band diagram for this rod slab and hole slab, you will see the following. The rod slab favors a TM like gap and the hole slab favors a T like gap something very similar to what you have seen in the previous lecture for uh, 2D photonic crystal of uh, dielectric rods and hole array. right? So the band diagram uh, for photonic crystal slabs, these are suspended in air. So again, the blue lines are basically the air cones. That means these are basically all of the extended modes which are basically propagating in air. Okay? And below this, whatever you see here is the guided mode in by this slab. Now, if you see the red, blue and red bands, they indicate the blue indicates TM, red indicates T like modes. Okay. And uh, this is the brilliant zone. So, we have actually gone through the brilliant zone. Uh, this is the square one. So, you have uh, the important points of gamma, X, M, and gamma. This is a uh, triangular array or hexagonal array. So, the brilliant zone is a hexagonal shape, but the irreducible brilliant zone is again a triangular shape as we have seen in the previous lecture. So, you can take um, gamma, m, k and gamma. These are the points you go through. So, you can see that there is a clear tm like gap and this is a t like gap. Okay. So, we are saying like like here because they are similar to the ones we have seen for the 2D photonic crystals, but these are slabs, the finite thickness ones. Okay. Now, in this um, particular slab array, let us try to introduce some defects that we have discussed in the previous lecture. First thing, let us introduce a linear defect in the slab. So, you can actually in two or three dimensional photonic crystals, you can form a waveguide by removing one row of the rods that is possible. And how it is done? In this case, the row is removed gradually. And to show how exactly how the defect is forming, okay, you can actually see that the radius on the top is getting shrink. Okay, So, here you have all the rods are having identical um, radius, but towards the top they are getting all you know tapered. Fine. So, these are the two views of reduced um, radius waveguide fabricated in a rod slab. Okay. And this is designed to operate in uh, near infrared wavelengths. So, what are the material? So, the material is gallium arsenide for the rods and those are having um, low index aluminum oxide as the pedestals. Okay, stands. So, this is the top view of that particular um, array. It is hard to see from the top view because you know um, you are actually from the top you will not be able to see the conical shape. Right. So, how does it help? Here you can see that if you have reduced uh, radius rods, say the rods radius has been changed to this one. So, for a defect of uh, rod radius of r equals 0 0.14 a and at a particular wave vector k x a by 2 pi is given as this. So, if you take this particular value and if you simulate the results, you will see that you are able to waveguide light along this particular defect. And here also you can see the confinement along this particular um, line defect or reduced radius rod. So, the electric field is mostly confined in this region. Okay. You can also have uh, photonic crystal slabs without you know by removing or uh, you can actually take a whole slab and remove a particular row of holes that can be can be also another defect. So, here you can see such an example. So, this is a beautiful uh, slab of holes 
and this particular uh, line of holes have been removed. So, this is basically this one and this is the SEM scanning electron microscope image of this particular missing row of holes. So, how it helps again this will help you to find out some uh, particular modes can be guided through this and this modes need to be in the why we do the band diagram because this modes should be in the gap bands gap band mean the frequency of those modes should lie in the band gap of the crystal so that they are not able to leak out into the crystal if they are within the like allowed bands what will happen you excite or launch a particular mode they will be able to leak into this particular slab so that is not good you want to actually guide it so they should not leak into any of these cases so the frequency should be chosen from this particular gap band and that is why calculation of this photonic band structure for any of this particular slabs is also very important the next important topic is photonic crystal fiber now why it is important because you understand the importance of optical fibers that is the backbone of this telecommunication internet and everything right so you you actually require optical fiber from astrophysics to medicine everywhere so a traditional fiber has got a central core which has got a cladding of sl slightly lower refractive index right and the light is basically guided through index guiding so the light um, travels through the higher refractive index material surrounded by a region of lower refractive index material so this is uh, a typical uh, photonic crystal fiber so what happens here in the cladding region you are basically incorporating a periodic structure or a photonic crystal and that photonic crystal should be um, having band gap of the wavelength that is being carried in the core so how it will help it's a simple explanation that light from the core should not be allowed to leak into the cladding so if if that particular wavelength falls within the uh, band gap of that photonic crystal that has been made in the cladding so there is no way out so light will be guided through the core endlessly right so photonic crystal fibers they are also called uh, microstructured optical fiber they can be divided into a few broad classes okay according to whether they use uh, index guiding methods or band gap methods for optical confinement so there are different ways of uh, working so let's see what is that so first one is photonic band gap fibers confine light using a band gap rather than index guiding okay and band gap attractive is a band gap confinement is very attractive because it allows light to be guided within a hollow core so the attenuation will be not there okay so in a silica core fiber when light travels there is a attenuation but if light is able to travel in a hollow core fiber that is the core is made of air okay in that case there is very low attenuation so as i mentioned this minimizes the effect of loss undesired nonlinearity and other unwanted effect which comes from the bulk material like silicon induced effect in fiber that can be removed if you use a hollow core fiber okay now there are three types of photonic crystal fiber so one can be a black fiber that is one dimensionally periodic cladding of concentric layer so you can actually design the uh, cladding using a break break grating okay they these are called as black fibers then you have seen um, this one hollow core fiber by a band gap so here it is actually doing a uh, band gap kind of guiding because you have a hollow core and you have a photonic crystal around it so whatever is being guided cannot escape into this periodic uh, photonic crystal so this is uh, band gap kind of uh, or you can say this is band gap method or band gap uh, confinement and the third one is holy fiber where you have a solid core that supports light propagation through index guiding but the cladding is 
now made of you know photonic crystal again so in this two case this is the difference this is a holy core okay and uh, this one the core is solid but it is called a holy fiber okay because the uh, cladding is basically made of holes because when you actually have holes around that will effectively lower the refractive index and this is how you get a high and low refractive index material in the fiber okay so this is how the fibers are drawn so photonic crystal fibers they have enormous practical advantage over the periodic structures that you have discussed first the this fibers can be uh, created through a drawing process fiber drawing method so what do you do in this case um, a scale model of the fiber or preform is created which is typically centimeters in size so you actually make the actual shape of the fiber like this and then you heat the preform and pull it so it is like you know bubble gum being stretched and you can draw the micro um, you know micrometer thin fibers okay so in this way hundreds of meters or even kilometers of fiber can be drawn from a single preform and as you are drawing you can actually make a roll or coil out of it okay so here is some uh, band gap calculation of the index guiding fiber of the or the holy fiber as you can see okay so the easiest photonic crystal fiber to understand are those that employ uh, index guiding as you see here they guide light by the virtue of smaller average refractive index of the cladding relative to the core so by introducing this air holes you have brought down the refractive index of the surrounding medium so that works as the cladding and the light is basically guided in the core so here we have taken like a triangular array of uh, air holes so this is the core the core can be thought of as a missing hole in the center and how does it help one might hope that it would be sufficient to consider only the average uh, index contrast uh, between the core and the cladding in this case but in fact you have to understand the band diagram to find out that which all modes are basically guided in such a particular fiber so that way you know uh, calculating the photonic band structure for this one is also very important we will not go into that much details because it is not that advanced course. I am just showing you the possibilities. So here are two possibilities of the fundamental mode that can be generated in such a fiber. As you can see one can have this kind of electric field orientation the other one can have the orthogonal one. So these are basically doubly degenerate uh, fundamental mode. So their polarizations can be nearly orthogonal. In one case it is EX another case it is EY okay now in an ordinary index guided fiber one can go up to higher and higher frequencies okay or smaller wavelengths and more and more guided modes can be pulled below the light line right so higher order modes are also possible but in, in that case if you see here in the solid core holy fiber okay when you um, reduce the wavelength or increase the frequency okay so the effective index basically touches that of the silicon okay so they can actually uh, remain endlessly single mode okay regardless of the wavelength so that is something very interesting that in this particular case you can have single mode throughout so the question will come why are the higher order modes absent that you can see from here the reason is that the effective index contrast between the core and the cladding in the holy fiber keeps on decreasing at smaller wavelength okay rather than remaining fixed if it was a effect like uh, homogeneous cladding so in this case the confinement for higher energy modes become very weak because the delta n 
between core and cladding is very less. So, those higher order modes leaks out. So, they will not be guided. Okay? So, the higher order guided modes they remain below the light line. So, they are basically in air. So, they will be leaked. So, in the limit of small lambda, in this particular limit, you can see the refractive effective indices of both the modes and the light line, they approach the index of 1.5, which is of the bulk silica. Right? So, that is how you can say that um, in this kind of solid core holy fiber, higher order modes cannot be sustained. So, only single mode can propagate. So, that is also very, very good. There is no multi mode interference and all these things. So, there is a huge uh, promise of uh, photonic crystal fibers in the future. So, here are some uh, electron microscope image showing you how exactly the hollow core fibers look like. So, this is hollow core fiber okay, and this is a omnidirectional mirror. This is again hollow core okay, omnidirectional because in all the direction you have a mirror kind of thing based on Bragg. Okay, Bragg cross section. So, you have alternating layers of high low, high low, high low dielectric and so on. So, this is one particular uh, fiber and this is another fiber. You have silica glass and air. Okay. So, these are the air holes. Okay. These are the zoomed one. You can see this is electron microscope image of hollow core holy fiber. Okay. So, this part remains as it is. So, there is no hole, uh, air hole is missing here. Okay. So, this is the holy fiber section, right. So, this way you can understand that there are so much of applications of photonic crystals, 1D and 2D photonic crystals and even 3D are also being used as cavity. Hmm? So, by introducing uh, point defect, they, they are very good resonators. We will not go into all those applications here, but in short, these are the uh, more popular uh, usage of 1D and 2D photonic crystals and with that we will stop our discussion here. So, in the next lecture we will go into the basics of metal optics or plus bionics and this will be the final thing. Um, this, this lecture concludes the discussion on photonic crystals. If you have any questions on photonic crystal, feel free to email me at this particular email address mentioning MOOC on the subject line. Thank you. Mm -hmm.